M365 Copilot just got some major upgrades. I tried out the new app builder workflows and agent tools. And if none of that sounds familiar to you, it's cause it's just coming out. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what these tools can do, what they cannot do, and why if you're really technical, you have a big advantage even in this AI world. My name's Sean and let's do this. First thing I'm trying out is app build. So I'm gonna click here and I can build any app I want, such as I need an app to track the work for clients. There should be a description box I can type in, a drop down list of different client names, yes, no field if it's billable work, and start and end time. Here's the twist. I want a timer button so I don't have to manually remember when I worked on something. I can just hit start and then hit stop. Let's take it for a spin. It starts by creating all the tasks that it's doing in order to build this app. And it's convenient because you can see that it's figuring out the data schema first, which is how you would build an app if you're a software engineer. And next it's the UI elements, like the client dropdown, the billable toggle, and it gives you a whole breakdown. The more complicated your requirements, the longer this will take. It completes key features delivered. It breaks down everything that it did. And then you could go over here and preview your app and boom, that's nuts. So I guess the work I just did is reviewed sales and marketing pitch. It gave me a nice calendar option. So I'm working from today. And let's say I did this from four o'clock PM until five. I'm gonna click save session. Description and client are required, but it, I didn't have any clients in here. So let's fix this. So add these clients, Untethered365, an amazing training company, Contoso, you know who they are, and John Deere, who's doing amazing stuff with AI, and Copilot, let's pick that. Sweet, now when I go to client, there they are. Let's re-add the description. I'm gonna choose it for Untethered. I'm gonna do my times, and now let's save it. Boom, billable now, like, lovely. Now you should be thinking, where is it saving this to? Like, what's the back end for storing all this data? Well, if we hop into SharePoint, we'll see that I have a new website called App Builder. If I open that, and if I go under here under Work Sessions, there it is, Review Sales Copy and Complete Marketing. It's using SharePoint, a system you already understand. Now let's tweak it some more. Let's say I want it to default the date to today's date. I have default the start time to today's date and then the end time to today's date, but in an hour. So let's set that because I'm honestly tiring of clicking this and choosing all of these items. Let's make it easier on the user. The user being me, let's make it easier for me. And right there, defaults to today's date and time and the end time is here. Like how awesome is it that you can configure it? Since this is SharePoint, by this logic, I should be able to come in here. And then if I wanna enter it here. So now I'm on the SharePoint side, I'm gonna say that the description was I enrolled 20 people in our solutions architecture training. This is billable work. I'm gonna click save, cool. So now I'm gonna hop back into M365 Copilot. I'm gonna click on App Builder. I'm gonna see my client work tracker. And boom, there is the other one that I just entered from over here, appearing right in the app. Again, because they're talking to each other. Now let's say I don't like the look and feel. My company has this branding with these colors. It's very friendly and I wanna mimic that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna upload our company logo. I'm gonna say, change the app color scheme to match the uploaded logo and put the logo in the top right corner of the app. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, looks a little slicker. It couldn't get the logo yet, but I'm sure that's coming which is also a tricky ask for it because that means it would have to take that logo and save it somewhere, probably SharePoint. So I'm gonna try to make its life easier. I'm actually gonna go here and get the direct URL and then tell it to use that instead. Use this URL for the logo image. Boom, untethered 365, my logo right there. Like, are you not entertained? Like, that's insane. All right, let's try to push it to its limits. Create a submit button that will send all of these work sessions and we'll email them to the manager. Let's see what happens there. All right, it added the button here and then look at this, simulate sending 
Okay, so now we're getting to the limits of what this can do. Right now, it can't connect to external connectors, I'm sure yet. My theory is over time, they'll allow this, but your IT admin will have to give you approval because it's one thing to let you have your own SharePoint list that you can do whatever you want with. It's a whole separate thing if you want to start emailing people automatically that can get into spam problems. And even using external systems like Dataverse or something like you would need to get specific permissions to be able to do all of that. But let's click it. What does it do? An embedded page, da, 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 weekly summary sent to da. Okay, so it uses the browser pop-up wizard to show this. Like, so this is what it would email the manager. I mean, that's cool. And we didn't even try the start timer button. So let's say we need to send a proposal to Microsoft about our DevOps training coming up with Parvez Gumra. I'm gonna pick our client untethered. You might be wondering how LinkedIn got in here. And that's because I just went in and added them as a client back here. So I'm gonna choose LinkedIn because Microsoft technically owns them, accounts. I'm gonna hit start timer. Wow, that is nuts that it's spinning like that. I didn't even ask it to. So I guess, am I supposed to catch it? I'll hit stop. Cool. All right, nice. Even though the start and end time looked a little weird, it did accurately get it down here. And as you could tell, it was only about a few seconds that it ran. Very cool. And just for fun, whenever someone clicks the send weekly summary, I wanted to shoot fireworks and send a congratulatory message. Let's see what happens. You earned a break. You completed two sessions for one different clients. Not bad. Fantastic effort. You completed two sessions for one different clients. All right. Now, if you come from a programming background, this is obviously going to be a lot easier for you. Like I knew to fix the image because I figured it would be hard for this app right now to store assets like an image. So I knew to use the URL. Also, I know why it's not sending fireworks, because that's probably a complicated JavaScript library that's external. And right now, this app builder is probably very secure and not allowing external JavaScript libraries to be used. Though in the future, there might be some safe libraries that are vetted and allowed by this tool. As you saw, this button to send emails doesn't actually allow sending emails yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna accomplish this through workflows. Workflows is like your personalized power automate. It's like your own personal tool to run random automation specific to what you need done. I need a, I need a workflow where I can on demand send all my work sessions from that particular week to my manager. Let's see how this goes. All right, nice. It's set up my triggers being manual. It's automatically using the Office 365 connection. If you use Power Automate or Copilot Studio, this should look familiar. Let's connect it to SharePoint. Send a summary of the work sessions from this SharePoint site. And it said retrieving SharePoint work sessions, get sessions from SharePoint, summarizing the work sessions. Obviously, I need to flip this order here, but it figured out to connect to SharePoint. It can even connect to Microsoft Dataverse, which is awesome. That was surprising. I didn't know it could do that. Cool, save successfully. And then I'm gonna go test this out. It's stepping through it and even giving me the times of how long each step is taking, just like in Power Automate. Nice, it was crashing trying to get the manager's email because he doesn't exist at this company, he's external. So I just removed that and I told it to hard code this specific email. So now let's test it out. And then I'm gonna press run workflow. I'm used to Power Automate where everything is up here. I'm not used to it being down here. Nice, took about 42 seconds to process all of that. Let's open up my email and look at this status update. And boom, here is my email. I would like this in a bulleted list. So obviously I could format it, but more or less it's doing its job. So I first asked it what other connectors it has and it can connect to Teams, OneDrive, Salesforce. It seems like everything that Power Automate can connect to, but I didn't take its word for it. So I asked it to connect to Gmail and Microsoft Planner. And it said Gmail is unfortunately unavailable in my environment, but Planner does work. And sure enough, there it is connecting successfully. But then I wanted to see how much coding or logic it can do. If you remember from my SharePoint App Builder app, I have a start time and an end time for all my tasks. I told workflows that the task it sends to Planner should be the smallest value of start time to end time. I wanted to see if it could calculate that. And sure enough, under here, find fastest work session. If we look at the result of it running, 
it definitely picked the one that is the shortest time, so it did it. Where I get excited is if behind the scenes this is no longer using AI Builder, which I assume it is, if it starts instead using those new Python operations that are available in Copilot Studio, not only could this run faster, but it could even be deterministic. So I'm going to look out to see if that starts happening. App Builder workflows, all very exciting. The final one I want to show you is the new M365 agents. One of them being the M365 admin agent, where it gives you a series of prompts where you can type your own. So if you want to find out which of your users don't have a license or who needs a Power BI license or any other questions that you would have to go to the admin center in order to figure this out, now you could do it all right here. And Microsoft is setting up MCP for a lot of its APIs, including the Graph API, so it should make this very reliable to use. And of course, there's other ones like sales, which can tap right into your CRM. So again, the vision is you could do a lot of your job from M365 Copilot. Overall, between agents, between app builder, between workflows, I think this really was the promise of low code that citizen developers can have the power of automation and app building without having to learn the complexities of pro code. And don't worry, Power Apps, Power Automate, Copilot Studio, they all still have their place because those are enterprise applications versus everything I'm showing you here is personal productivity. Depending on how governance and security will roll out for this, this is really the best of both worlds because the IT de department doesn't have to go and build apps for every single person and they don't have to worry about each person building their own apps that potentially break things because they can lock down what they're allowed to do just like how you saw how App Builder only let me connect to my personal SharePoint instance. Be sure to subscribe if you want to keep up with all the AI initiatives Microsoft is rolling out.